Hey Poo Buddies, welcome back, Anya here, and it is time for the new notebook setup. I am joining the Archer and Olive bandwagon, and I got, this was my Christmas present uh, last December, I got the Archer and Olive Bats uh, special edition for Halloween, and I've got to go with it a black flame candle, which I dig on for this vibe of, makes fire in his hand, and I, yes, must make fire in the hand light the black flame candle and let's get started on setting up a new notebook let's also get a fresh pen and set this notebook up right no faded or smudgy lines we like a nice crisp line the first page to deal with is the this book belongs to i'm not a big fan of this page i know this book is mine everyone knows this book is mine um i've never lost a planner or a journal so I don't really care. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some black craft paper and a sticker from one of my favorite Society6 artists. I will link their shop in the description below. Love their work, Always, it's always ghouly, it's always cute. It's just the perfect Suvi vibes. And I need that, I need that in my planner and I need that in my journal. The next page to deal with is the opening page, and if you are familiar with new journals, they are always very tight and kind of useless, so I just like to paste them together. Just get it out of the way. We don't have to worry about it now. This next page is where a lot of bullet journals like to put in their grid spacing guide. I have found that I don't use a grid spacing guide. I tend to use a lot of the same layouts over and over again, but this is a new journal for me, and I'm not familiar with the... Um, number of squares so I am going to do some formatting here on this page and do a count of how many squares down how many squares are caught across uh, but when it comes to doing my layouts I, I just count and a lot of people find the grid spacing helpful I don't because um, I end up just counting anyway so no real point or I just use the same counts over and over again once I get familiar with the notebook so I'm just going to go ahead and count how many squares across, how many squares down, and give myself a little cheat sheet here. And then I'm going to use the rest of this spread for formatting, but not for my bullet journal. So just little cheat sheets, uh, little places where I can just gather things that I will use over and over again. So like, first of all, is going to be my stationary list, where I make a list of all the stationary that... I am out of, so when back to school season comes and all the things go on sale, I can keep an eye out for it. Um, and that also that also keeps me from buying stationery throughout the year when I don't need it. I just wait for one time a year when everything's on sale and I look around and if it's available I get it and if it's not I just hold out or I find something else. Um, and then books, I've been actually uh, decluttering my space but there's always that book that you have to have and you can't just get it from the library you have to have your own copy so it's good to have a little running list there for my next little format list I needed some scrap paper and I decided to go ahead and use the paper that the journal comes wrapped in when it comes fresh it's always wrapped in that nice clean paper it's like what do you do with this and I needed some paper so this worked out perfectly so these lists, uh, they're just things that I need to keep notes on and little notes that I need to keep a list, running list on. Uh, and I decided to make it look, I don't know, um, pretty to go with the notebook. So the first one is just like this little, uh, like, a, like a library, old school library pocket. Uh, and then it needed a list that would come out of it. And that made me happy. I think I glued the wrong end and it wasn't working quite right, but it still makes me happy. For the second page of the spread, I got a little creative with how I am making my lists and I'm doing a flip door in the shape of a circle and then a barn door and again I'm using more black craft paper and so this is a barn door in the shape of a house and I'm gonna add some more of that paper that the journal came wrapped in uh, to the inside so that I can make my list uh, and then so it kind of has that uh, haunted house full moon look 
going on. What I should have done, what I should have added is a taken on a paint pen, a white paint pen, and drawn a bat going across the moon so that it really came together and had some some uh, something extra to it. So. I know the glue stick is so old school and lots of people are all about the, the glue tape dispenser thingies. Um, I don't have one and I have a lot of glue sticks so as long as there are glue sticks and they work I will use what I have and not just buy things. So. To finish this off and really bring everything together, I use some extra fancy stickers a, uh, to kind of label what these lists are for. A dip pen for stationery, a book for books, and a, my camera decided to stop filming for the quill hand for my hashtags list. Yeah, I think the moon really needs that bat. This next spread is the most tedious and time consuming of any new bullet journal setup and that of course is the year to glance future log spread. I totally get why people invest in month stamps. That would totally be a thing. Um, I should probably put that on my stationery list. Probably should. This is my third bullet journal and my last one lasted me 13 months and the one before that, which was very small, lasted me nine months. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume I'm gonna have this one for at least 12 months and do the whole 12 month years from July to June. So one of the fun things about getting a fancy journal with a nice image on the cover is it kind of sets the theme for the overall journal. So this one has bats, so I went ahead and I got a bunch of bat stickers. And I'm just going to use a different bat for every month of the year. Back when I used a pre-printed planner, I didn't ever use a year at a glance for anything except it took up space. Uh, but now that I use a custom planner that I have to do the month myself every every month, uh, it really helps with keeping track of future dates, especially like doctor's appointments and things that are more than one month later uh, in the future. And I've really come to use this a lot. So it needed to be pretty and it needed to fit the overall arching theme of bats. So that is the rest of 2021, and now to do the first six months of 2022. Moving on to my goals and progress trackers for the next 12 months. This is probably one of the best reasons to have a custom planner and uh, using a bullet journal for myself. Back in January, I set up my goals for 2021 overall, so I'm kind of carrying a lot of that over into this one. However, what I am putting in these goals are going to definitely be for the foreseeable 12 months. So I am, because I am planning on using this journal for at least 12 months, she said, fingers crossed. The thing that I have found that has been absolutely very helpful beyond anything else is actually making these boxes or clumps of categories for different areas of my life and then separating out the goals into those categories. It really helps me stay organized and also see just how much of goals I'm doing but also uh, where I'm focusing, which is why the boxes are different sizes and in some cases slightly awkward shaped. Uh, but it helps show like how many goals I'm doing for my personal life, my writing life, my art life, my uh, side projects, and also limits how much I can set for myself.
this actually might be one of my favorite spreads that I have ever done and one of the reasons I keep doing it. I love filling it out. I love setting goals. I love setting big goals and then breaking them down over time. And anytime that I'm setting up uh, for the, the week or the month and I'm going, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I should be doing. I always flip back to this page and I look at what, uh, what else did I want to do? What else was I hoping to achieve? And sometimes it changes and I go, oh, that's not going to happen. Or, oh, I don't care about that anymore. But it's there and it's, it's a nice reference to flip back to and see. This is definitely not an ornate spread. It's very straightforward and very easy to read throughout the year. Uh, so we gotta, we gotta deck it out somehow with some washi tape and some metallic stickers and uh, some color to break up the, the boxes so that you can kinda know. And there's no rhyme or reason to which one's got which color. Uh, it's just colors that I thought went with the stickers and washi tape. And then of course, bats. This other side of the spread is going to be my star charts. So I have a bunch of things that actually go into my categories and my goals that I that have numbers associated with them, like X amount of these things, uh, X amount of watercolors, X amount of gouache paintings, X amount of something that I'm hoping to achieve in the next 12 months. Uh, and so I made a little star chart version of that. So I'm drawing out some lines and they'll each get a header and category to say what they're for. And then I've got a stencil that has a nice small little stencil star, five point star in it that uh, I got these back when I got my first bullet journal. I don't know where they came from. I think they might've come with the notebook but they are really handy with drawing a small five point star over and over again when it is nice and neat. And uh, so as I fill in uh, and do whatever the categories are, a, a poem, a, a watercolor, I get to color in one of the stars that is there on the star chart. So just like we did back in kindergarten, lovely little, little star chart. So this is kind of a blank, black and white setup right now with a bunch of stars, but hopefully by the end of the year, or hopefully sooner than the end of the year, it will be full of lots of colorful stars that are all filled in. I haven't decided on amounts for all these different categories yet, so I just started by putting in five stars to each for now, and then once I have a set number, I'll go back later with the stencil and draw in the correct number of stars. And if I exceed the number of stars, yay, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be overachieving? Finally, I have my income tracker where all the different areas that I have income and uh, I can track in one hand-drawn Excel spreadsheet-like setup. This is probably the most adult page spread setup that is in my bullet journal. It is so not whimsical but so necessary and very handy to have. And just like I did with the uh, year at a glance, I'm going for all 12 months in the coming future. So July all the way through June of next year. And here's hoping that I actually use this journal all the way through because I really don't like setting this up. I, I would rather get a lot of use out of it. Uh, this is almost as tedious as the year at a glance. I really don't like filling my bullet journal with excess whimsy pages. I know they're a lot of fun. Uh, that's just not how I like to use my planner. I don't like cover pages or quote pages. They 
end up taking a lot of time and energy and planning and they're really fun and they're really pretty and no disrespect if that is your thing I am not criticizing it's just not my thing because I never turn back to them so I spend all this time and energy on them and then I never look back on them and it's just taking up pages that could be used for something that I do turn back to so that is really something if you hadn't already picked up on uh, I am really only trying to do spreads that I actually use and have a reason to keep turning back to. I hear a lot of fellow bullet journal peeps like me uh, say things like, oh, I have to do my quote page, I have to do my cover page, and I'm sitting here going, no, you don't. It's a custom planner. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to just because it's on trend and everybody else seems to be doing it. Um, I'm not doing it, and I hope that if it's not something you want to do and you needed the, the affirm that other people don't all do it, here I am. I don't all do it. We don't all do it. Uh, we, we do all do different things. It's a custom planner, and that's the beautiful thing about it is it's custom to what you need and what you want. So that all being said, I absolutely love the creative things that people do in their bullet journals and I dig on all that. I just tend to do it all in a separate art journal specifically for that creative outlet. And I know a lot of people really like having their creative outlet and their scrapbooking area. So a lot of people do like memory pages or playlist pages and cover pages and really fun things so that it's all in the same notebook with their planner. That is just not how I roll. I like to keep them in separate planners so that when I am doing the planner stuff, it's all in one space, nothing else in between, and all my creative stuff is its own thing and I dig on that. To bring some flair to this otherwise very boring adult spread, uh, we needed some metallic bat washi tape. Just because we're being practical doesn't mean we can't have flair. And when my spreads are really all filled in, you can definitely see a lot more flair because I do use them to be more creative ongoing and not just during the setup process. We're ready for a flip through to see all the wonderful things that we did. I'm so happy to have a spooky journal that is custom for me, both inside and outs. I love the bat theme that is going on in my overall journal. And uh, if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up or leave a comment and tell me if uh, you'd like to see the spreads all filled in at the end of the year. Having your feedback really helps me make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching, Boo Buddies. I will see you next time.